Diamond Smuggling and Murder is the name of the game in this episode, as Michael is sent undercover to pose as a boyfriend to a model of whom is part of Bernie Mitchell's agency, who doesn't necessarily practice legal financial planning, if you know what I mean. Bernie purchases very expensive diamond jewellery, then have them pose as fake jewels, and then have them sail through customs, and then sells them off to then transfer the funds to numbered accounts in the Grand Caymans. Money laundering and diamond smuggling is nothing new in the world of fiction. Just look at various mob movies over the years to Leonardo DiCaprio's 2006 Blood Diamond movie. So, for Knight Rider to have these aspects in the story for this week made for an entertaining episode, as it's always fun to see Michael working undercover. That, and I think from the character's point of view, this is probably the best assignment he had been presented with as he had to pose as a boyfriend to a very attractive supermodel. Nice work if you can get it. It's interesting to see Michael and Kit discuss fashion and the Trans Am trying to understand the need to update one's apparel. As why would someone need to update their style if last year's was already satisfactory? And he's correct in some regard. But as Knight points out, some people's tastes change over time and they like new things. And this is where Michael is also correct, because fashion trends change over time as a means of staying ahead of the curb and offer new designs in order for designers and studios to remain relevant and stay atop of that particular chain. One of the more <laughs> amusing sequences is seeing Kit getting an amorous couple to leave Bernie's office by having various objects move and animate simulating the presence of a poltergeist, which got a laugh out of Michael and no doubt the audience. I think this was the first time that the Foundation ventured into Mexico in order to carry out their work, as the next time would be Season 3's Dead of Night. Only, Kit didn't board a plane in that episode. It's odd for Kit to have a fear of flying when he's never actually flown. This is something that his younger brother in Knight Rider SG didn't have, considering that the C-34 was the main means of transporting the Kit Stang around when the journey was too great a distance to make by himself. But, it's another layer peeled away from Kit's personality and further enhancing it. I can't really fault the writing this week. It was well written, with a lot of well executed set pieces that could be adapted for a future movie if they ever choose to do so. As for acting, Joanne Flug, who plays Nina, Bernie's right hand player, knows how to play a hardened jerk with the way she basically tells Michael to get lost through the use of her intimidating smile and the way her teeth are positioned. It's the way when someone is being a jackass to you in real life, yet it's meant to come off as being polite when it's anything but. Cameron Mitchell as Bernie Mitchell basically has you liking and hating the guy. You like him because there's a magnetic charm about his charming charisma, and you hate him at the same time because you know he's whacked two people in the course of this episode but the man did his job properly if he's able to make you jeer him. Wendy Kilborn, who plays Lauren, I think has to be one of the slightly weaker guest appearances on Knight Rider, as most of Michael's love interests of the week tend to have a little more it factor in their performances, and I just wasn't feeling it with Wendy. Sure, she looked the part with her beauty, but I just got the sense that she was phoning in. Hey, Bill Murray, I wonder if she's worked with you before. David, as ever, kills it as Michael. I think he probably had a lot of fun with this episode, with the story entailing diamond smuggling, jetting off to exotic locales, and getting the drop on a douchebag that had it coming for some time. Hearing Daniels discuss fashion and venting Kit's frustrations about flying and being kept in for customs was entertaining to hear, as Kit was already quirky, but this week just took it to another level, with Daniels selling his performance with the Trans Am's fear of flying. Mulhair and Holden had limited appearances this week, but they made the best use of their screen time as they worked as a team for Michael's plan. On to the score, Don Peak delivers as only he knows how, and this really felt like a mini action movie this week, especially with the chase sequences and to the amusing end piece where Michael and Kit made it difficult for Bernie to leave. Discrepancy time! Aren't you glad? No, I'm not. For continuity. When we first see the villain's car, it is definitely a blue colour, but in subsequent shots of the Monte Carlo during the chase scene, it is a dark colour, like black or deep grey-brown. On one occasion during the car chase, when the Monte Carlo runs a red light, stop sign, and barrels through the intersection, a nearby 
grey pickup truck swerves and stops abruptly, causing a large squarish cardboard box to fall out of its loaded bed and land in the roadway next to it. But when Kit follows the Monte Carlo through the intersection, the grey pickup's bed is empty of visible cargo and there is no box sitting beside it. Aha! Uh -huh. At the former party scene near the end of the movie, Nina is giving Michael a sour-faced grilling, Yet in the very next shot that shows Michael walking away, Nina is smiling broadly. Even in side view, you can clearly see her white teeth. As for crew or equipment visible, when Kit tells Michael that the bad guy they're chasing at 9997 Granby Street, Michael says that's where Rachel's boyfriend lives. In the next shot as Kit turns right, the shadow of the camera and the operator panning it to follow Kit can be seen on the street. <sighs> that was done today, that could just be edited out. And a connection with the Season 3 Knight Rider episode, The Ice Bandit, the turbo boost scene is reused from this episode. Overall, as I mentioned in the writing, this felt like a mini-movie with the way it was written, and it felt bigger in scale when you take into consideration that they went outside of LA and into Mexico. This is classic Knight Rider, where it has the grand scale of a feature film for the small screen. My only gripe for this week is Wendy Kilborn. I appreciate that she tried to make the best use of the material that she was given. But I think it would have served the episode better if they had gotten a better actress. Other than that, this week had little to no flaws. It's why I say this is the greatest TV show ever made, because you have all the great thrills and action of a well-written movie for TV. And also, because you have the greatest TV car ever. The Night Industries 2000. Kit. Until next time, good night from the night.